Hi guys, Super Secret Tech here, and I wanted to do just a quick compare and contrast over Headhunter and Mageblood. Figure out what will work out best for you if you're in the position to your one, especially since the price difference between the two is fairly significant. Uh, so the goal of this is going to be basically going over what each belt does, as well as what it's most useful for. That way you can make the best decision for you personally. Before we get started, if you would be so kind as to like, comment, and subscribe below, it really helps out the YouTube algorithm to decide that I make decent content and I'm worth putting out there. So any help in that, I would greatly, greatly appreciate. But anyway, let's get on to the video. Mageblood does is it gives you anywhere between two and four flat net uptime and they don't use plaster. You can use an enkindling or 25% increased effect and show. And on the enkindling orb, you want to get increased effect. It rolls up to 70, I think it's 60 to 70. It's not worth divining though because divines are kind of expensive and enkindling orbs are pretty cheap. Worst case scenario, just keep hitting it with enkindling orb and you should eventually get like 68, 69, 70, even though it's probably worth it to keep rolling until you hit 70. Not all my flask are that way, just to be completely honest. What Headhunter does specifically gives you all the mods from a rare monster for the next 20 seconds. This is especially potent if you do things like the Nemesis mod, extra pack, extra pack size, as well as beyond on your map, as all those things increase the amount of rares that will be in your map, which indeed increases the amount of buffs that you have. So you can very ridiculous things going, even though on the flip but they did have some of the buffs so you can no longer get so big that your foot is the map because that was the thing. It also works really interestingly with the occultist passive regarding being able to curse expert as you can self cast self curse yourself with temp chains that way and get even longer duration even though it is quite a bit of investment to do. I hope that mage why would you use headhunter and why would you use mage blood? There is no felt better in the game at bossing than Mage Blood is. So if you're trying to do Maven or Shaper or Elder farming, or you're looking at doing some really high end, very difficult content like Edel, or if you're wanting to do some alarm farming, which is currently probably the most profitable thing in the game, it is basically impossible to beat Mage Blood. However, if you are wanting to map very fast, if you're looking to do Nim 3 or Nim 4, and that is Nemesis Mods Draw additional current three additional currency or four additional currency it's basically impossible to beat head essentially always a place for both of these it just depends on which one you would rather do you would rather run very very quick fast efficient map or very very high investment map with a ton of rare monsters and then headhunter is going to be your best bet where is mage blood excels at extremely difficult content with bosses specifically because Headhunter really gets no added benefit from the majority of the bosses in the game. Other than you can walk into like guardians and things like that, you can kind of just walk into the room with a laundry list of Headhunter buffs and destroy them. Whereas Mage Blood doesn't necessarily carry that same way. However, you can also always use Mage Blood with an inspired learning, like what I'm doing currently on my Lightning Strike character. And you kind of get a little bit of both worlds while still getting the huge survivability boost from actually being able to run the mage blood itself. Thanks for watching. I hope this was beneficial. And please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Do the outro.